Why is my tile floor cracking? And this is a terrible problem to have and definitely can be the source of a lot of stress. I think I can help you to at least under understand why this might be happening. There are actually a number of technical reasons why you could be experiencing cracks in a tile floor. Um, let's go over some of them and maybe by explaining them a little bit further, you might be able to zero in on which one you think is happening to you. So the first thing I think that is worth mentioning is deflection or deflection standards. When you install tile on something, that something needs to be pretty darn stable because if it's a very weak surface, uh, you know, like let's say it's a very thin piece of wood. Uh, and then I go walking on it. I'm a pretty big guy. It, it needs to be able to support my weight without flexing. And you might be thinking, well, I mean, tile, it's so strong. Shouldn't tile absorb that, you know, uh, that weight? And no, it turns out I'm too huge for tile and it cracks anyway. So what you have to appreciate is that the tile is really not supposed to absorb any of that. You want the substrate to be able to be strong enough to absorb all of that. So the, there is a deflection standard for tile setting for every application. But in general, I think that you'll find the thickness of one and one quarter inches of substrate is what you need. And you can see I've got, you know, some some wood on the, the table here and a little piece of cement board and some tile. Like this is a super thick piece of wood. It's it's I think this is three quarters of an inch thick. And I mean, it's strong enough, you could stand on it and jump up and down and do all sorts of stuff. And it's going to be fine and not break, but it's not strong enough to support a tile floor because it wouldn't meet the minimum deflection standards. It's actually not even close. You basically almost need two of these, one over top of the other, attached to each other. And now this is a surface that is strong enough to support a tile floor. And I think that's the most common problem. If you have a cracking tile floor, that's a huge amount of thickness and there's it's more complicated than that because there's even more steps that are going to add to the total elevation of the floor and you can't have your tile floor be like a half step up above the rest of your house and that's what would happen if you needed to put in enough subfloor to ensure that the tiles don't crack. I see that all the time, that uh, especially in older installations, the tile gets installed on something that's kind of strong, pretty strong ultimately not strong enough in 10, 20 years down the road, you've got broken tiles everywhere. And that's not supposed to be the case. When you install tile, what you're doing is investing in something with a long and impressively long service life, supposing that it gets installed correctly and then maintained properly over time. Uh, so I think that's the first thing to, to consider is that perhaps your subfloors aren't meeting deflection standards. And as a result, just regular use of the, the home and foot traffic is causing enough deflection that the tile is absorbing more forces than it was intended to absorb. Um, and to that extent, let's talk about the tile for a second. You know, there is going to be a certain amount of force transfer, which ultimately meets the tile. Wouldn't it be better to have a much stronger tile versus a relatively weak tile? Doesn't that sound good? Let me rephrase that. Wouldn't you like to have porcelain tiles instead of ceramic tiles? And before I said that, you probably thought these two things were maybe even the same thing, and they're not. Porcelain is substantially stronger than ceramic. So if, let's say, we're in the design stage here and you're trying to figure out how to not have my floor crack, maybe one of the things you want to think about is deflection standards as we talked about, but also choosing a tile which is very strong, very robust, something that can withstand some strength or some some damage or some force. Let's consider, uh, you know, a kitchen floor. Oops, I knocked a big can of soup off the counter onto the floor. And when it impacts that floor, man, you want that tile to be really strong or else you've got a broken tile in your kitchen now. And if you're in that situation, which you might be watching this video, it kind of sucks because it's a little bit hard to deal with that. A uh, very skilled hand can cut around and remove and replace, uh, supposing it was an accident like that soup can incident and you don't have something more serious happening like a problem with the substrate not being thick enough. But let's talk about something else that could have happened that's causing this cracking of your tile floor. And that is expansion or expansion and contraction. So when you make a tile floor and then you put grout joints in between all the tile, 
you transfer the, the force from one tile to the next, or the grout joints do. And let's say you were to take that tile right to the edge of the room on both sides. And instead of leaving a gap where the tile meets the wall, you just went ahead and did grout joints there too. And so now you've got literally grout joints wall to wall, touching both walls of your house. What happens when, you know, six months later, it's now the heat of summer and your house is 20 or more degrees warmer than it used to be and the humidity is totally different. The wood in your house swells, physically gets larger, takes up more space, but your concrete slash tile floor, it's wall to wall, remember, and we're talking about something that is notoriously bad for flexibility. So it has no choice but to buckle. The strength of expanding, like uh, we commonly know this with if you have water and water freezes, it expands and it grows. And if you had, let's say, a pipe in your home and it's full of water and it freezes, well, that water's going to expand and for sure that pipe's going to break because the, the force, the energy behind that expansion is tremendous, essentially unstoppable. And so as much as tile is so strong, it's attached to the floor so strong, when it expands and it has nowhere to expand to, there are no expansion joints allowed for in this installation, something has to give. And that's when you get a failure you know, where there's two tiles, and then you come home and there's a buckle in the floor. What's happened here? That's an expansion related failure. There was not a, an allowance for there, depending on the amount of square footage and the type of materials you're working for, there's standards for everything to do with tile setting, but there will be standards for how much square footage before you're going to require some sort, of, a, a, some sort of expansion joint. In the average home, if you just remember, don't take it all the way to the wall. Remember, you're probably working with baseboard or something similar to that degree for a finishing detail at the wall. So you don't need to take that grout joint right to the wall. When you set your tile, don't just slide it up until it's touching the drywall or the studs and start tiling from there. Give it a little breathing room. Those spacers that you're using in between the tile, use them at the edge of the room as well. Maybe even double them up and give it some room for expansion and contraction. That's very important. Let's talk about something else though, because this is pretty common when you're talking about failed tiles. When you install the tiles, we use that notch trowel, that fancy notch trowel. It's kind of the only application you use that notch trowel for. Look, I've got one right here. And this one here has these tiny little notches on it. And you would use that for a relatively small tile installation. Why do we do this? There's a very specific reason, and if it's not being done, then you might have broken tiles as a result of this. When I install a piece of tile first, I put the mortar, the thin set, on the tile itself, and then I trowel it to the, the surface. Both are 100% covered with thin set. This just a scratch thin layer, but something I've applied with some force. This is a little bit thicker, but then I use the notch attachment as the final process, removing 50% of the mortar that's there. And this is significant because when I set this tile, you do a little wiggle movement or you apply some force with something like, uh, you know, a rubber float, either just pushing or by hitting into the tile. And if you could see, and you can see, I've seen videos on YouTube where they set tile on glass to show you this, because we removed 50% of the mortar, we're able to squish the tile down and remove 100% of the air. When you remove 100% of the air in between your tile and the surface that you're setting on, it makes the tile so much stronger. It makes it part of the substrate. Any force that it deals with gets absorbed differently. Remember earlier we were talking about that soup can? Well, if this tile was installed poorly, Let's say it was installed a very common way that tiles get installed by people who don't know what they're doing. You put a big blob of thin set on here, just like that, nothing else. And then I take it and I squish it into place. The problem is, is I probably got out most of the air, like probably, but there's still some air in there. And as a result, the forces don't transfer the same way. And when the soup can fell and landed on my tile, it broke my tile. But if I had used a properly sized notched trowel and installed in such a way where there's no air left in the finished product in the thin set in between the tile and the substrate, it would have transferred those forces and likely not broken. It's very interesting. So even the same tile can break under the same set of circumstances, 
based on how well it was installed. And to that point, it's significant to note, it's not all just the same thing. There are nuances to, to tile setting, as it turns out. You have a small tile, you use a small notch. What about great big tiles? What I, I mean, you could, you could do that. It probably is going to work okay. The larger format of tile, the larger your notches need to be. And again, this is very important, all in the pursuit of being able to evacuate all of the air that's trapped underneath of this tile as we press it into place. Thin set is just that. It's thin. It's not supposed to be thick. It's not supposed to go on in globs. You're supposed to back butter or put it all over the back of your tile, 100% coverage, removing all of the excess. And now when we set it, it's not only going to be free of air, the tile itself is going to be bonded very well to the substrate that we've just created with this, this channeled trowel. That's what accomplishes being able to set tile that can not only withstand some direct impact, but also just withstand things like a little bit of improper deflection or extreme events of, you know, expansion and contraction, like your house had a burst pipe and it was very, very humid for a while. If your tile is installed well to the proper standards, it might withstand events like that, whereas marginally installed or poorly installed tiles will break more readily and more often and any outlier events that you encounter are almost certainly going to result in a total failure of the system so this is kind of these are the reasons why that i most commonly am encountering cracked or broken tiles and tile floors i hope you found this helpful